So we get to Newton's first law of motion. Now Newton was an English fella uh, in the 1600s, so about 100, 120 years later after Galileo. And he came, uh, he embedded Galileo's idea of inertia into his first law. Every object continues in a state of rest or at uniform speed in a straight line unless acted upon by a non-zero net force. You may have learned this already. An object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an external force. So that brings us to the idea of net force. Let's say that we're, we're arm wrestling, okay? And I'm pushing down with all I got, and you're pushing down with all you have, and you've got more than me, okay? You're gonna win the game, but that doesn't mean that I didn't push. You just pushed some or a lot or a little harder than I did. That's why you won. So if you, if you say push with 10 Newtons of force, and I push with eight Newtons of force. Really, I just think of it as the eight eats away eight of the other. Eight going west is eating away eight going east. And then if you started with 10, you've got two left over. It's the same as two going west. Okay, so the, the smaller amount of force gets, uh, gets exhausted and then whatever's left over is called the net force. So a net force um, going left doesn't mean that there was only one force going left. There could have been 50 forces all pushing in different directions, but they canceled each other out, and whatever was left is called a net force. And a net force is always going to be in one direction um, at a certain amount of force. So let's look at some examples. If you and I both push on a box with five newtons of force, and a newton is a unit of force, we'll talk about later, it would be the same as if you pushed on that box with 10 newtons, okay? Both of us will add, as long as we're pushing in the same direction. If you push in one direction and I push in one direction, or we pull in opposite directions, then we're gonna cancel out those forces, and it would be as if that wasn't moving. Imagine a tug of war rope where the two teams are equally matched, one pulling one way, the other pulling other, the rope knot doesn't move if the forces cancel out. So here is the equilibrium rule. It's derived from Newton's laws and says if an object is not uh, accelerating, then it must be uh, zero uh, net force. If there's any force at all on an object, it's going to accelerate. Okay, so. For instance, if there's no other forces at all and I have a net force in one direction, it's going to accelerate that object. Imagine a ball in your hand and you are pushing your arm harder and harder and harder. The ball in your hand is accelerating from left to right as your hand moves it, okay? Because the force you're putting on the ball is not zero. And since it's in one direction, you're gonna accelerate the ball. So this idea is as long as everything is not accelerating, then it must be in equilibrium. And equilibrium means everything is balanced. Whatever forces are going up are balanced with all, whatever forces are going down. So here's the painters on the sign. You've got ropes pulling up. You've got gravity pulling on the masses going down. The board weighs something. Both painters weigh something. And they're all pulling down. Everything is balanced as long as it's not accelerating. If it's accelerating, then you know that there is a net force, okay? You've got a man holding a bag of flour and he's weighing it. Is the flour accelerating? No. If the, ba if the bag is just suspended there, then it's not accelerating. That means the forces are balanced. Well, there is a force of weight, okay? That bag weighs five pounds, and so it's pulling down at five pounds. So five um, pounds is a British un unit of weight. Of uh, force, but the metric is, or the SI unit is, is um, the newton. So how many newtons? It's weighing there. It says it's about nine newtons. So it's pulling down at nine newtons. Well, if it's not accelerating, it must be zero. So what's pulling up at nine newtons? Right. You're going to see there's tension in that spring. That's why the scale is working. The tension is pulling up with equal uh, force as the bag is pulling down. 
if you've got a book on a table, it is either falling through the table or not. If it's sitting on the table, then there must be a force up from the table equal to the force of gravity on that book going down. So if the, if the book is being shoved into the table by its weight, then there must be a force called the support force, also called the normal force. It's a 90 degrees to the surface of the table pushing back up on the book, equal and opposite to its weight, otherwise it would fall through the table. If you would have, I could imagine having something so heavy that if you put it on the table, it wouldn't just break the table, it would actually go through the table. Okay, if you put something ridiculously heavy on top of a table, it would probably crush everything, but it was most likely actually make a hole through the tabletop, okay? Because it's pushing down with a higher force, a net force, than the support force. But as long as there's a support force, you're gonna have equilibrium and it's not gonna move. So a lot of people don't understand the support force because you can't see it. You've got weight pushing down and it's not moving. So according to this idea of the equilibrium rule, there must be no net force on it, but yet gravity's there. There must be a backwards force that we can't see and that's the support force. The picture here of the spring might help you. The spring is pushing back, okay? Well, so is the tabletop. Okay, this is important and a lot of people miss this. Can you grab this concept? Equilibrium doesn't mean stopped. It just means not accelerating. So there's two possibilities. It could be stopped, all right? You've got a book on the table. The book is pushing into the table. The table's pushing up on the book and it's not moving. It's not accelerating. So it's in equilibrium. Well, you can have other things in equilibrium except something stopped. It just not accelerating. So imagine that I take a can of peas or whatever and roll it on my desk, okay? If the can is not accelerating, if it's just moving at a constant speed, then all of the, the weight of that can is rolling into the desk, down onto the desk, and the force of the table is pulling up on the can, so the can is not going into the table, it's just rolling across the table, and it just keeps rolling at a constant speed. So equilibrium can be two types. Static equilibrium is stopped, okay? All of the forces are opposed and the tug of war ropes is not moving. Dynamic equilibrium means, let's imagine you've got two teams on the flatbed truck going five miles an hour down the street and now they're tug of warring, okay? If they're perfectly balanced, there's no acceleration left or right, but the entire rope and both teams are, bo are moving, okay? So a can rolling across the table is in dynamic equilibrium. Okay, the stupid idea with the teams on the flatbed truck pull tug of warring, that's in dynamic equilibrium. So this is just an example. If you push a box and it's not accelerating, it's going at a constant speed, it's still in equilibrium. Okay? If you are if it's the box is simply sitting on the floor, it's also in equilibrium. The last guy we're going to look at is Copernicus. Copernicus um, also basically said that Aristotle was wrong. Aristotle thought that the earth was st uh, stopped and not moving and fixed and that the stars and the planets moved in the, in the sky above the, above the earth. The sun and the, all the planets and the stars all moved and the earth didn't. He didn't feel it moving. He didn't get car sick. He didn't feel the wind blowing because the earth was moving a thousand miles an hour. It felt like it was stopped. Copernicus said, it doesn't match what I'm looking at. He, he had the concept, if the earth were actually spinning on its axis, then the stars would appear to move in the sky, the sun would appear to rise in the east and set in the west. All of this, all of this would make sense. He proposed, at great cost to himself, he published this book on his deathbed, by the way, because no one liked the idea that the earth was not the center of the universe, okay? So, most people didn't like it. They said, if the earth is moving, then the tree is moving. If the tree is moving, why doesn't it, why doesn't it whip the bird off the branch, okay? Or if I drop a ball at my feet and the earth is moving, why doesn't it fall at your feet, 
So a lot of people made fun of him and laughed at it. But what's happening is it not, it's not just the tree that's moving and the earth that's moving, it's the ball that's moving, okay? Everything's moving. The bird stays on the branch because the branch is moving and the bird is moving and the earth is moving. All of it's moving and so it appears to us that nothing is happening, okay? So if you're on the school bus and you throw a coin up, in, up into the air, it's going, not gonna go into the back seat Okay, just because the bus is moving, it's going to go up into the air and come back down into your hand because you're moving, the floor is moving, the coin is moving, all of it's moving forward. All right, hope that helps.